Burning is a story about young people in today's world. When they think of their lives and the world, it must feel like a mystery. That quote is by the writer-director of this film, Lee Cheng Dong. It's based off of a short story by Haruki Murakami, but this director has made it his own. This film is a masterpiece. When I tell you the plot, it's not going to seem that interesting on the surface, but the execution of this director's vision and its themes is unlike anything I've ever seen. Burning is about a young 20-some-year-old man named Lee Jung-soo. He runs into a childhood friend, Shin Hae-mi. At first, he doesn't recognize her, but it's because she got plastic surgery, and he's very quickly infatuated by her beauty and bubbly personality. She leaves for a trip to Africa, and then comes back with a very enigmatic and handsome guy named Ben who's also very, very wealthy. And Lee Jong-soo has to deal with the disruption Ben causes in their relationship and his world. I drove an hour and a half to an Alamo draft house to see this movie after hearing the buzz. One of the managers for the theater actually stood in the front and told us this bit of wisdom before the film started. This is a mystery. Don't try to guess what happens. You will be unsuccessful. Just try to experience it. End quote. Of course, that sounded like a challenge, but he was absolutely right. This is a mystery in its purest form because by the end, you're left with so many questions, but it's completely intentional and it's incredibly powerful in the way that it's directed. The acting is amazing. The story is unique. The film is beautifully shot. It's a slow burn, but it's immensely watchable. There are shots I've never seen before, not through flashiness, but through the way the camera moves or lingers or the objects it chooses to film. That in combination with the musical score and the context of what our characters are going through elicited strange new combinations of emotions. Not all of them good. In fact, most of them were quite uncomfortable, but it was something new and it's still pushing my mind trying to process it. If you're even slightly curious, go watch it. It's not playing in a lot of theaters, but I would drive double the distance I did to support this film. I'm going to link the trailer below. It's a really good trailer because it only builds intrigue without spoiling anything. I'm going to briefly explain what I think happened and that I'll tie directly into the themes. This is your final warning to stop this video. I'm about to spoil everything. Burning is the great Gatsby if Jay Gatsby was probably a serial killer. We never see Ben, this story is Jay's Gatsby, directly do anything bad. There isn't fire, but there is so much smoke pointing to bad behavior. Ben's mannerisms and behavior are sketchy right off the bat. When we first meet him, he's talking loudly in the car to his mom, and he has this laugh that seems like something's off, but it could also be normal. We get the conversation when he's cooking at his house, and he talks about enjoying having full control over what he creates and then consuming it. Later, he talks to jung Su about abandoned greenhouses he likes to burn, jung Su is intrigued by this story and takes note of every greenhouse near him, yet none of them burn down. The only thing that disappears like a puff of smoke is jung Su's love, hey Mi, and our alarms are going off now. Since everything Ben said about the greenhouses being unwanted, the greenhouses no one notices, a greenhouse very close to jung Su, all of those apply to hey Mi. And the implication of this conversation by the end of the movie is that he's killing girls roughly every two months. Soon after hey Mi's disappearance, he has another girl who becomes a plaything for him and his group. They treat her with the same kind of curiosity they treated hey Mi, but he also quickly becomes bored of her. And Lee jong Su sees this, but he doesn't do anything right away because he doesn't have enough proof and we as the audience don't either. A few more clues that Ben killed Hey Mi. When Ben is just overlooking the lake, seemingly with no purpose, but he specifically said earlier that he enjoyed looking at the things he burned. And again, burning doesn't mean fire, it's just an analogy for getting rid of something without a trace. In Ben's own words, you can make it disappear like it never existed. So maybe that lake is where her body is. At that last party, we meet Ben's cat, who he says was a stray, but somehow it responds to Hamie's cat's name. And finally, the scene of him putting makeup on his new girlfriend. That seems creepy and controlling, but you might say, I've seen YouTubers do the put makeup on your girlfriend challenge, and maybe he enjoys makeup. And you're absolutely right. Besides the supposed crime of burning things, which we also never see, 
Everything he does in this film could have an innocent explanation. The cat took a few calls to respond to Jung Su, so maybe he just got lucky with when the cat approaches him. It's not crazy to think Haimi left her watch at his place at some point. And of course, we have the countless scenes of Ben being completely amicable, if not a very friendly dude. Sure, he can seem a little aloof, but he pays for meals, he gets along with his family, he includes jung Su as much as he can, despite jung Su being pretty awkward. Ben has a family, he works out, he hangs out with friends, doesn't seem to work, has a lot of girlfriends. Those are the pieces of maybe a handsome rich sociopath. This film definitely wants us to understand why jung Su has convicted him in his mind, but there is no fire. We never see Ben kill, and that will always leave doubt to what really happened. In an interview at the New York Film Festival, an audience member asks Stephen Young, the actor who played Ben, what it was like to play a bad guy. And he responded, It was fun, but remember that it was all viewed through the eyes of Jung Soo, so we don't know if he's the bad guy. Another thing against Ben being a serial killer is if Ben knows Haimi is dead, why does he so casually appear when jung Su calls him to come hang out with him and Hae-mi? Ben seems very smart and in control throughout the whole film, so he would have to assume that jung Su has either gone crazy or is out for revenge. Ben's last facial expressions is not of one who's killed every two months. Think about that body count, even if he just started that year. Ben's dying face is of someone who is genuinely shocked and terrified of death. Ben is intentionally mysterious, someone that would fit no archetypes. Again, as told in interviews by Stephen Young, who's American, but he's playing a Korean national. Even though Young spent a lot of time working on his Korean, he admits that he couldn't shed his Americanness completely. And while American audiences might not sense his otherness within the film, the Korean audiences definitely would, whether that's the way he moves or his accent. And this purposefully enhances the mystery about this character, who's supposedly very well-traveled. Ben meets Haimi in Nairobi, Kenya of all places, so maybe that's why he seems a little strange. Heyman is also a mystery to us. She goes to Africa to satisfy her big hunger. Little hunger being your basic needs, but big hunger are the big questions of existence. All of the stories she tells about the cat, the tangerine, the well, she seems to be trying to figure it all out through her stories and why she has been in so much pain. Jung Soo's father is this short-tempered guy, according to Jung Soo. According to the neighbors, he was also kind of a dick too, but we never see it. We only see the broken down silent man in court. All of the photos of Jung Soo's father scattered around the house seem to further flesh out a man with a fully lived life. It's not that we don't believe Jung Soo and who he thinks his father was. We can tell he loves him despite his father's flaws and we want to know more. We want to talk to his father and see how he feels. But there's this wall and it's a wall that exists with a lot of sons and their fathers and he ends up feeling like a complete mystery. When Jung Soo's at home, the person that keeps calling without speaking also ties into this theme of what's going on. And finally, we have Jung Soo himself a writer with no story, he can't find work, and then it seems like he has no will to work. He needs to take care of his father's mistakes and eventually his mother's when she needs a five million won. This is a very sympathetic story towards today's youth. It almost feels like it's blaming the previous generation, but I think it's more of a statement of how things are rather than a lecture. The only thing jung Soo cares about has the will to fight for is Heimin, and yet he can't even save her. After the theater manager warned us not to try to figure it out, the movie started, and of course, I tried to figure it out. And within the first frame of the movie, I realized this was not a typical, predictable film. But I kept pushing, kept thinking, and watching every detail, and towards the end, I thought I figured it out. Heyman had been missing for a while now, and I thought if the last scene was Heyman showing up, and then jung Su kills Ben, and then it means jung Su kills Ben based on a lie, then this movie would be about perception and obsession, and everything would make sense. And then it abruptly ended, and all of my theories scattered across the floor. I had to go back in my car and just quietly sit there for 10 minutes trying to process it. I ran the whole movie back in my head, reflecting on every scene, yet I still had no definitive answers of what happened. I felt completely lost, and that is the masterstroke of this movie. 
he puts us in the shoes of Jung Soo, and that sense of helplessness and confusion is exactly how Jung Soo felt throughout the whole film. And it's so tragic, and it's also so cathartic. This 65 year old director has made a movie filled with empathy for all of its characters, focusing mainly on how hard it is to be a young man and young woman. Jung Soo constantly masturbates because he has nothing better to do. Ben does a lot of stuff, but everything bores him except maybe killing people. Hey Min is a shining light of a person, yet she spontaneously will burst into tears. One of her old co-workers even remarks, too much makeup or too less makeup, a girl can never win. The last thing Jung Soo says to Heyman is that she's a whore, and that was from the one guy she trusted. Her trauma is manifested in the story of her falling down the well as a child. It's a story very few people believe, but in the story, Jung Soo saved her, and that's her emotional truth. But to what actually happened, we can't be sure. Just like we cannot answer the questions of big hunger, or at least not alone. And that is the final theme of this film. One of my favorite shots is at Jung Soo's home, and the three of them are staring at the dimming sky, hanging out. Ben is in a dark shirt that looks purple in the light, Heyman is in a bright purple shirt, and Jung Soo is in blue. I remember it because those are the colors of the sunset, and they fit really well together. Heimi and Jung Soo have no parents in their lives. Even Ben, who has money and family, every time we look into his eyes, we can tell he's somewhere else, and that's why he's so drawn to Heimi and Jung Soo. Despite everything that happens between the three, they are kindred spirits in their loneliness. The only time Ben's fully present is when he talks to Jung Soo about the burning and later about the bass in his heart. Maybe what made Ben feel the bass was murder. Maybe it was EDM music. We'll never know for sure. But to sum up Ben's words of wisdom to Jung Soo, don't be so serious, touch your chest, and feel the sound that rings out from the depths of your heart. That is being truly alive. I don't even know exactly what that means, but it sounds really deep. Thank you all and I'll see you all next time. If you can't tell, I love this film. If you've seen it, please tell me what you think happened because I am still confused. I'm still thinking about everything. I definitely want to watch it again.